Hello everyone. Welcome to another episode of E4M Pride of India brand series, a unique effort to celebrate the efforts and achievements of homegrown brands. I am Mansi Sharma and in today's episode we have Mr. Manos Nicholas with us who is the general manager for Big Cello India. Started in 1995 for manufacturing and marketing of wide range of classic ballpoint pens with important tips in German inks, Cello remained one of the market leaders in the category for the longest time. It was in 2015 that it was acquired by French stationery major Bic and today it offers a host of innovative stationery products and is loved by millions of Indians. Today Manos will take us through the brand journey, the role of marketing in creating the brand Cello and the way ahead. Welcome Manos. Uh, thank you very much for the introduction. It's a pleasure having you for today to have a chat. Great. So then let's just start and let's start with understanding the journey of brands BIC Cello how it came into being and how is it you know leading the market as it is leading right now Sure uh, basically as you correctly mentioned in 1995 uh, Cello was uh, launched uh, it was introduced in the market of India uh the team at that time have done a tremendous job a uh, very good job in to distributing a qualitative product uh, that has uh, reached uh, to the hands of many consumers and uh, our company we have always been looking from a distance uh, in india and we were following up the industry quite closely and we were impressed uh, with uh, the level of professionalism and the good job uh, that uh, the founders of the company have done Uh, that came into uh, the first meeting uh, with uh, the previous ownership uh, uh, in 2008, 2007, 2009, somewhere there, and we started discussing and trying to find ways of collaboration, partnership. That ended up into the acquisition uh, in December 2015. Uh, and uh, since then, uh, uh, we took over the business uh, and. we have uh, protected uh, and we have uh, invested into the inherited brand because uh, it is a beautiful brand that has been built uh, over the years it is enjoying a great brand awareness if i'm not mistaken close to 90% are native brand awareness and about 50% uh, of uh, recommendation by retailers uh, for uh, purchasing the brand uh, which are very very amazing achievements that have been done and we wanted to honor this uh, heritage and of course to take it to the next level and to the next generation of uh, where we envision uh, the product and the brand to go uh, so that is in a short note uh, 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 the story of how everything started and where we are today that's great that's great. so when you have uh, acquired the brand and till now uh, how have you seen the market progression in the category and how have you maintained you know, uh, that position that you had created for yourself yeah basically the uh, the interesting thing with the um, with the stationery category as you may know it is that it's very linked uh, with the education and uh, the important uh, part that we have seen and we have noticed in, in the market of india is that the education plays a very important role in the society but also the government is is helping and envisions and is investing in education and uh, first of all that is very encouraging to see uh, we are very happy to see that there are governments that uh, uh, have as a high priority the education and the growth of uh, its people and um the the this focus that the government is putting on education it has a positive impact in the industry of the stationary um uh, products uh, so uh, the evolution of the category is positive the long term is there uh, the opportunities and the potential for growth uh, is uh, sitting in good hands we have hiccups as we all know with, uh, with the pandemic that they may have uh, uh, stopped uh, a little bit the pace of development and growth however 
uh, we should see that not as a major threat because it's always short sighted and it's short term, one year, two years, three years of challenge. And then what we need to look is where things will be in 10 years, 15 years. And uh, the important thing is that we see that it is recovering. And uh, the good also thing is that we see that major players in the industry are investing behind the product, so they're investing in the quality, and that they are increasing the quality and the level of everybody, because everybody is trying to reach the other person and the other company and the other company, and that is healthy, because it, uh, it can only bring the good news to the industry, and at the end of the day, to the consumer. Oh. That's great. Uh, and a very positive outlook towards, you know, the business and how the industry is shaping up right now. Another thing that I feel that for brands in your categories, the digitalization of the world might have come up as a, as an unexpected challenge, especially in the past few years. So how uh, is the category and how is the brand reinventing itself to fit into this new digital world? But most of the things I've transferred online, so is writing, so is painting, and so is everything that, uh, you know, each object has or to yeah, I have been asked several times about whether there is a threat of the long term in the writing instruments. Uh, and uh, to my personal view, and there is no studies that we have done, the pen will always stay. You will always keep writing. Uh, first of all, when you start your basic education, you don't start your basic education with a laptop or with a computer or with a tablet. Mm -hmm. You start your education with a pen in the hand. You have to learn how to write. Hmm. Uh, certainly, we can see that with the example of the calculator. Everybody yeah. was that you know, with a lot of calculators, and we will forget how to make additions and uh, subtractions and multiplications and divisions and all these things. No, you keep on learning this, but then the calculator makes your, your life easier and make it faster. However, the knowledge has been there. Hmm. Second very important part is you will always have the need to express yourself. Whether you need to write an essay, whether you need to write a poem, whether you want to draw, whether you want to uh, uh, write a quick note, uh, a quick telephone number of somebody, uh, something not to forget, even writing in your own hand, something to remember after one hour. Yeah. This will ever, always stay. So the future of the pens, uh, the future of the writing instruments, it's going to be there. It might check out, but uh, there is no threat that it will disappear. Yes, it will have other usages, which I am not in a position to tell you how it's going to be in 15 years. However, you will keep writing. You will still be needing a pen to write, to express yourself, and also to keep your notes. There are even people, uh, as you may know, uh, that the learning uh, process is different between the an individual. There are people that they need to write in order to learn. Others, they have the photographic memory. Others, that they don't keep notes and they remember everything. Everybody has his own thing. So the pen, the notebook will always stay. It will have a role. Uh, the question is how it's going to evolve. And to the first part of your question with regards to uh, digitalization and uh, how the world is evolving, especially over the past year when we saw the booming of the eco. Uh, this is not new news. All the changes that we see, the fact that we are today in Zoom and we are having a chat and we are not uh, having a cup of coffee together, uh, you know, in our office and, and chatting, uh, is what's going to come? Uh, there are no any more borders across the globe. The technology has helped to bring people closer. The, what has happened with the pandemic is that it has accelerated the pace of reaching where we are today. Otherwise, we would be in the position where we are today, maybe in two years or three years or four years. Mm -hmm. So what the pandemic brought was an acceleration of usage of the technology and reaching there. And the econ business, the econ business was going to go where it is today and maybe grow even further. It's just that it has accelerated. So there are evolutions in the trade. There are changes. The key question is every organization, how agile they are, how they have foreseen these changes and how well prepared they were with plan, plan A, plan B, plan C, in order to adapt themselves to these uh, evolutions. Um, and in such situations, how important do you think is the role of marketing the product right? 
uh, for a category like pen, like not many people, especially when their students are aware about the lot many brands they are available. When I was a student, what I used to do was go to the shop and try 10 different pens, writing then and there on the paper and saying, which feels more comfortable and which feels more okay in my hand and which is giving me a better handwriting. So in that case, to, you know, build a brand name and to, you know, stay on top of the mind, how important is the role of marketing and how, how is Big Cello, you know, going towards it? What's your approach to marketing? Uh, marketing is essential. And the role of marketing is especially to uh, products that they could be either considered seasonal, like the station products, or commodities. Yeah. Uh, is there a role? How can I differentiate this product versus the other? Yeah. Uh, so, it has a very important role. And everything starts with the position. Hmm. You said that uh, you were trying your, your, yourself the pen. This is one of the features of the position. So, hmm. what? that we need to do in our strategy is basically to make sure that our pens is of such a quality or such a, let's say, features that meet the needs of, uh, of uh, consumers. And consumers are different. Therefore, that's why you need to have different opportunities and options so they can choose what suits them best. Yeah. Uh, others, they like uh, you know, to run with a very fine point. Others, they prefer to write with a medium point. Others, they prefer gel pens or ink. So everybody has his own preferences. So the first task is to be in a position to offer the alternative. The second task is also to position yourself. Hmm. What do you want consumers to think when they see your brand, whatever it is? So what are you doing behind this in order to create uh, that affiliation of the brand with something? Yeah. In our case, the first thing that we want to try to achieve is to have lower um, weight and uh, dependency on specific product segments. We are trying to diversify our offering and we have a role to play in different segments, whether these segments or product segments called coloring, whether they call ball pens, whether they call mechanical pencils, whether they call markers, whether they call gel pens, whether they call the roller pens. So we would like to be in a position to offer an option to our consumers that covers all the different segments. The second part is that you and I may have different shopping habits. Mm -hmm. You go to the outlet, you take the pen and try. Yeah. Maybe my shopping I don't care. I just want quick and convenient. I want to click my in my mobile, uh, you know, the uh, the button, and the one side is go back home from where I have the parcel sent by uh, the e-com platform with my order. So it is very important that we are also uh, present in multi-channel. Mm -hmm. You want to see our general deal? It is important. It's the biggest portion of the business today. But at the same time, we want to be seen by consumers in the modern trade. We want to be seen in the e-com. We want to be seen in the business to business and into the institution. So the strategy that marketing is playing for us in the positioning is that first, we can offer something for everyone, mm. different products, and you can find it everywhere, whenever it is possible to buy a pen. Yeah. Whether it's for the stationary, traditional trade, or a modern trade, or any form, or in your business. Hmm. So that is the strategy that we are building our position. That's great. And in terms of communication, you know, a few months ago, I also did one story that how stationary brands, which were very heavy on television uh, once in India, have slowly started moving more towards digital marketing and on-ground marketing. Uh, how has been it for your brand and how do you see, you know, the usage of television and digital and other mediums in marketing? The marketing mix and the communication mix, in my view, should be according to your target groups. You need to understand what you're trying to sell, what is the profile of your consumers, and then based on that, you are building your uh, your campaigns accordingly. You cannot exclude one one let's say particular media uh, 
methodology, for example, the traditional uh, media, which is PVCs or it is still board outdoors or whatever, or exclude uh, or include uh, uh, print uh, in newspapers and magazines, or, or because it is trendy, let's go and put all our budgets uh, in the digital. What you need to uh, be clear it is you know your positioning of your product, and then you build uh, uh, the communication campaign based on two things. Who is my target group and uh, the content? Yeah. So, for example, uh, you said that I would like to see what is comfortable when I'm writing. So, the, the, the question is okay, which product it is very good for Muncie? And mm -hmm. this is it. So it has these features that it's a joy of writing. So, I will be communicating see the emotion of being it's joyful when you are using my pen. Hmm. Somebody might want something which lasts for long. So my communication would be maybe less emotional, less uh, touching the heart, but more physical. Ah, there is an engineer, so I would speak more on the features of the product. So yeah. the communication content should be aligned with the positioning of the product, but also with the target group. And then you, you should be also uh, analyzing. So Mansi, when is she spending most of her time, and how are her influence? And where are the other things here? Uh, is it on online? Is it, is it whatever? You need to have this mix in order to come with your communication strategy. So, what sort of mediums and what sort of you know uh, strategies are you uh, deploying right now, especially for the ongoing fiscal like? What sort of mediums are you planning to be present on? Uh, what's the tone and tenor of your communication that you are, you know, planning to have uh, on board to have to get maximum eyeballs and maximum consumers on board? Uh, and second part to this question would be, as you said, that you want to be present on e-commerce platforms and be visible there. So what is that effective uh, strategy to be on e-commerce sites and be visible? Maybe be in the top 10 products that people are looking for when they are searching for stationary products. Um, then let me start with your second portion. Uh, we have uh, specific, we have developed specific tools uh, which we are following very closely uh, internally. Uh, there are a number of elements that are critical in order for you to be successful in the e-commerce. First of all, is search. Mm -hmm. You need to uh, make sure that uh, when somebody is trying to find uh, your uh, a product and searching in the search engines, they can find you and they can mm -hmm. find you quick. Mm -hmm. So there are things, there are strategies behind it in order to make sure that uh, you are seeing when somebody's searching. So search is an important factor that we look at it and we try to build on it. A second part, uh, element on it, it is um, uh, uh, the price. You need to be careful how your price positioning your product versus competition, but also versus the other segments that a similar product can be bought mm -hmm. uh, in order to create the cross-channel businesses. A third part that you should be looking at uh, it is what kind of products you believe that you have in your portfolio that matches and fit the ecosystems. Uh, then you need to look at uh, rating. You need uh, to look on uh, um, how consumers rate your product. Which means because now it becomes, uh, as you, you go to any of the platforms, there are comments and there are ratings and yeah. uh, their opinion, whether they're five star product, three star product, whatever you see, the averages and whatever comments are being uh, said. So the references, ratings is very important uh, to you follow up in order to see whether you do not have a suitable product for that channel to replace it. And in case you have a product which is suitable for that channel, to further invest on it and move it uh, to make it bigger. Mm -hmm. And the last one that, that you need to have it is content. Uh, it is a golden opportunity in the e to build the content behind your product. Uh, maybe to show your pictures, maybe on a video, maybe to show a picture, maybe whatever you feel that it is important that can add and help you in, uh, when it comes into uh, the content uh, of, of what you're trying to communicate with.
coming back to your first uh, question, uh, we always wanted, we are globally as an organization, very close and very interesting. We have a vision that uh, by uh, 2025, we would uh, have um, reached uh, uh, or we had improved uh, 250 million children in uh, education conditions. Uh, we are audited by that from uh, external auditors on the actions that we are doing over the past uh, three years on how we can improve the learning conditions of uh, children through different means. And uh, education for us, it is a very important element and our strategies and communication strategies to come back to your question is linked to education. We are taking initiatives. We are helping uh, also with our corporate social responsibilities um, uh, uh, actions that an NGO and an organization to ensure that the education conditions are constantly improved. And we do communicate that because other, with, in addition to the business, it's also a very important factor for the society and what we can offer as an organization to the society and to the people. Great, great. Uh, two points that I noted here. One is you spoke about the importance of good content. And second, you said that education is the peg that you're leading this content, this communication with. So if we talk about this content, are you generating all of this in-house or you have some external partners who are helping you in developing and promoting this content? And secondly, uh, what sort of, uh, you know, language, what sort of, is it more on the lighthearted side or is it more about a serious conversation that you want to have about education in India and in general? What sort of tone that uh, you are using right now in your communications? Uh, both. For uh, the tone, it has to be, it has to be making the feel of uh, being happy, being uh, um, uh, enjoy, uh, you, you, you enjoy writing with our product, you might be trendy, you might be, you know, for the youngsters and the teenagers, but at the same time, you need to have a message of serious, uh, a serious message of support, wherever is needed, and also you need to to have a positioning uh, that uh, I am trying to help towards that. You cannot, when you are talking about corporate social responsibilities and initiatives to help, for example, unprivileged uh, children uh, uh, and, or uh, no drop off from school or supporting uh, female uh, children not to drop off from school uh, in the villages or wherever, you cannot be funny there. You cannot uh, be trained. You, cannot, you have to be serious and you have to try your best in order to be able to pass the right message and give the support to have tangible results. But when it comes into a teenager who wants uh, to be trendy, who wants to be in line with uh, you know, his times, you need to find the right tone that speaks his or her language and you are in a position to pass the, the messages that you want. Uh, you know, it's trendy to hold this pen in your hand and it is nice. And you can show it to your friend and you want to show it because I am trendy. Uh, so it has to be mixed, it has mm -hmm. to be stuck, and you know what you are doing and why you are doing. As far as the content uh, point that you just uh, shared, uh, we definitely use external uh, third parties that they are giving us uh, ideas, they are giving us proposals, but we do have our own communication and marketing departments and experts that they are filtering this information. We are working it together because sometimes some of the proposals might not match the character of the organization, might mm -hmm. not match the culture of your organization. So what we need to look at is these ideas, do they match on who we are or not? If it is a yes, then we try to work on them and implement them. If it is a no, but good ideas, can we adopt them in order to be more me? I don't think mm. it can be it can be culture organization, it can be the position. Uh, so yes, uh, but we filter and we work it and we align it with our long-term strategies and marketing communication and and do you think that uh, stationery, especially pens, do they continue to be a lifestyle product as they once were? 
or have they got out of that area like having certain sort of pen was also a style statement was also a statement of you know uh, your own personality once upon a time do you think that still continues or has it faded um i believe that it still is uh, if you if you ask me i will tell you yes it still is i do not know the uh, uh generation i do not know which generation are we today uh, x y z uh, <laughs> <laughs> I do not know how these uh, the new generation will will evolve in, in the coming years. But yes, and the yes, is why I'm saying the yes, the yes is because you will always, as I mentioned earlier, have the need to express yourself. Mm -hmm. You cannot express yourself just to be practically out. Oh, I want to write it. You need something that when you are writing an essay, when you are writing a letter, when you are writing a a card with wishes, you are writing a poem, you are drawing, that also represents an extension to your art. It's yeah. part of you. You are holding it. It has to be you. Um, and uh, you need to feel comfortable with that. You will, we will always have, you know, the special pen that we will give maybe to our parents or mm. we will give to our parents when they will graduate that we will always believe that this pen is going to give me good luck and I will have good results in the exams. Yeah. Or I'm with that pen, my first contract, my first employment. So there is always this emotional attachment to the pen uh, that is linked with a special moment of your life. Uh, I still, I, I'll tell you a secret of mine, I had a pen, and by the way, it was big. Accidentally, I was a student that I was writing all my exams with that pen because I thought that pen was going to give me a good luck. It was the same. It was destroyed. Mm -hmm. uh, I had it in the edges. The, it had no cap. But I, I was, I remember until the first years of, uh, of university, I had that pen maybe from high school. And mm -hmm. it was there, never writing with it, but was writing with it during the exams because mm -hmm. I had the feeling and you're going to give me good luck and I will pass the exam. So I think there is always an affiliation with the pen. Uh, there is always going to be kind of also a statement that thank you or a congratulations or I signed my first contract with that pen and so on. Uh, if it was not the case, you wouldn't see prime ministers and ministers when they do bilateral agreements, uh, you know, signing and showing the pen that they are signing with. So there is always going to be something. That's great. Completely agreed to that point. Uh, now I would like to know from you, what are your sort of business plans and strategies? What are the KPIs that you are, uh, you know, chasing for this year and how are you positioned to achieve them? Yeah, the KPI is usually the same. We don't, you don't change KPIs years on years. You have selected a number of key performance indicators that will lead you to your long-term strategy. Because if you keep on changing your KPIs, then it means that you don't have a solid plan on where you want to go after two or three years. Um, so uh, in our case, we look at it on, in three elements. One, one major family of KPIs are linked with the financials. So there are a number of financial KPIs that we are looking at, whether they are PL related or whether they are balance sheet related. Uh, which every year we have specific targets that we try to meet and move towards uh, those financial uh, guidelines, directions, where we want to go in order to meet the longer term objectives that we have. The second uh, part of KPIs are the commercial KPIs, uh, where we are looking on market shares, we are looking on distribution, we are looking on uh, the, the quality of uh, our commercial work and effort to reach to the hands of the consumers. And the third uh, pillar or family of, uh, of KPIs are linked with uh, manufacturing KPIs, which are the product itself. So whether it is quality KPIs, the quality of the product, the rejection of the products, complaint that we might be receiving, um, improvements uh, and efficiency or effectiveness of the product, and the way we produce. Uh, there, there is a big portion of KPI, which is linked also with our footprint, how much plastic we are using, uh, if we are reducing year on year the plastic, on packaging, and et cetera, et cetera. 
So three major families, financials, commercials, manufacturing, product development. That sounds great. You also mentioned just in the tail end about how you are conscious about your eco goals and how uh, you're thinking about plastic usage. Can you tell me a little more about it? How are you uh, working towards effectively reducing the amount of plastic or, you know, effectively reducing your carbon footprint and, you know, work towards a sustainable future? Well, uh, the group globally, we have uh, a special team dedicated to sustainable development. Uh, where we are looking on all the elements on the, to how we can help uh, globally um, the, the, the environment uh, by reducing our uh, uh, footprint into uh, um, improvements. Uh, plastic is part of it, uh, the amount of plastic that we use. And we have specific tangible objectives set by the group uh, by uh, uh, 2030 or 2018, if I remember well, the, the amount of virgin plastic that we will be using to be zero, and so on and so on. Uh, similarly, there are other areas on, on the environment uh, uh, that can help is that uh, you can use the same plastic, for example, that the usage of, of the pen is longer. So you are increasing the usage by writing more, uh, so it's not only the raw material that you're using, but also the features of the product that may last longer, which means that you don't need to produce more and more and more. Thirdly, it is whether you're looking on alternative ways of energy. Uh, fourthly, it's as you mentioned, it about packaging. We are continuously improving our packaging in order to reduce as much as possible uh, plastics and uh, be closer to more environmental friendly uh, solutions. Also, uh, it is a society itself. What do we do in the society with corporate social responsibility action? Uh, how we are helping the society, whether educating or supporting or helping uh, people to understand uh, on, on, on the footprint. So there is a very big program. Uh, it is in the public space, so you can uh, easily go and check in our uh, uh, website, our vision of what are we doing and where do we want to go. And India is not out of that scope. We are also part of the global footprint. We are trying to help and we will be helping and we are improving the area. That's great. And I'm glad to hear that so many companies are now consciously taking these efforts to, you know, create a sustainable business, which is much more than just you know money and much more than just business kpis and creating a powerful impact on the society and on the environment as well uh, i think i got everything that i needed thank you so much for your time today manoj uh, are there any parting words that you would like to say i just wanted to uh, thank you for your time i just wanted to thank you for the opportunity it was a pleasure talking to you and uh uh, I appreciate a lot uh, the opportunity to uh, to have this nice uh, conversation and nice chat. Thank you so much.